Hi, I'm Jessica Marksbury, and today I am delighted to enjoy a round with the beautiful Blair O'Neill. Blair, thank you so much for joining me today. First of all, we have to have a drink. First things first. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you for being yeah, here thanks today. Thanks for having me. Now we're drinking Pinot Grigio, mm. and this is at Blair's request. So yes. I always like to read into what people like to drink and, and get some ideas about their personality. So what does Pinot Grigio <laughs> say about you, Blair? Well, actually I'm normally a red wine drinker, mm. but it's hot outside and we're in Arizona and we need something refreshing. So I thought we do a white wine, it's cold and delicious. Okay, good yeah, choice so far. Yeah. So we're at this awesome restaurant, J&G Steakhouse yeah. at the Phoenician it's Resort, beautiful. which is in Phoenix, but just right over the border of your stomping grounds yep. in Scottsdale, Arizona. Yeah. How familiar are you with, with the resort here? Well, I've played here quite a few times. It's a beautiful course. Obviously, the views are amazing. So to be here today is awesome. I mean, we couldn't ask for a better spot. Now, I, I think of you as the quintessential Arizona girl. But I read that you were born in Illinois. What is yeah, up with that? I was. I was actually born in Macomb, Illinois, which is a really, really small town. I did grow up here, and I played college golf here. And I mean, my life would be completely different if I grew up there. And I probably wouldn't be a golfer, so. I love the fact that you went to high school in Tempe, which is yeah. one of the coolest college towns in the world. Yeah. Not just in the country, <laughs> but in the world. What was that like? Did you get a taste of a little bit of the college party scene when you were just like a young teenager? My four years of college at Arizona State was very different than my friends who didn't play golf who went to <laughs> ASU. Got a scholarship to play there and played four years and played every single event. So it was a little bit of a different experience. I didn't really party a ton because we were always so busy and traveling. And then when you're not traveling, you're trying to catch up on your schoolwork. And I was always a good student and that was important to me. So I think I probably party more after I graduated. <laughs> <laughs> so I got it in, but just my timing was a little off, but that's all right. Scholarship golfer at ASU. Yeah. Then you decide to just, you know, put the clubs away for five years yeah. and just travel the world as a model. <laughs> How does that work? Well, I actually graduated from ASU and turned professional and played a little bit over in Asia and, um, and then also played on the Symmetra Tour. And then I had an injury. I broke my foot while I was out on tour. But at the same time, I started modeling right after college. And really, I started it because it was a way for me to pay for all my expenses because golf is expensive, as you know, <laughs> and especially playing on tour. So uh, once I broke my foot, I was out for some time. And you know, life just happened. And I just decided that I was going to kind of take a little bit of a different path and put the clubs away for a little bit. I n never told myself I was quitting forever. It was just like I was going to take advantage of these other opportunities that were right in front of me. What was it like when you finally said, you know what, I really want to go back to golf? I mean, when you first picked those clubs back yeah. up again, I would think you would just be like, okay, golf is way too hard. I oh. can't put in the time that's required to yeah. get back to the level where I was. That's a very hard thing. It was actually kind of the opposite of that. I took a lot of time off, and then when I would go play sporadically, I would go out and just play so great. And I remember one day calling really? my friend. <laughs> yeah. And that's really what I was like, what that's am I awesome. doing? Like, why am I not? Playing. I remember one time I called my friend and I was like almost in tears. I was like, I don't know why I'm not playing anymore. Like I like just play and I play like probably better than I was playing before. But getting the call from Golf Channel to go on big break is what spurred me back into playing competitive golf. So I always knew it was just a break, but it was for me timing, like everything. Who convinced yeah. you to do that, to audition for big break? Originally I got a call from uh, Stina Sternberg mm -hmm. and she had told me that they were doing an audition in LA and I think Golf Channel had asked her if she knew anyone that she thought would be good on the show and so she told me that they were having the audition. I actually drove out to California with one of my girlfriends, did the audition, it went awesome and a couple of years later I got called to be on the show. Wow. So it was a process. So how much had you really been practicing before you went on big break? Because then, I mean, you performed so well, and mm -hmm. not only the first time, but then you ended up winning when, well, on your second appearance. So that was kind of interesting because I was modeling and I was not playing a lot of golf. Um, I'd maybe playing a pro-am here or there, but I mean, I wasn't practicing like a professional golfer would be practicing. But when they called me and they said, you know, we've been following your career and are you still playing? And I said, oh, I'm playing a lot, yeah. <laughs> I said, well, we are gonna film the show in one month. I said, okay. So I literally had one month to prepare for this and I practiced my butt off. I practiced every day. I had a schedule out and I just grinded for a month and I went out there and uh, the first time I was on the show, finished runner up. The following year I got asked again to be on the show and then I won it. 
It must have been fun, too, to be hmm. able to play against that stereotype, because I'm sure everyone on oh, that yeah. show is like, here comes the model. Yeah. We'll see how yeah. well she can really play. <laughs> and as it turns out, yeah, she'll yeah. kick your butt. But yeah, I mean, because I hadn't been playing on tour, so they didn't know who I was, you know. And uh, I did all right for myself. Well, ever since yeah. then, your profile <laughs> has just been rising and rising and rising. You are a social media maven. I really, I follow you on Instagram, on Twitter, and you now, I think, have 50,000 followers. Yeah. That's a, that's a very huge milestone. That's pretty what is, cool. What does it take to be good at social media? I'm just curious, just for myself <laughs> as well. You know, my golfing career has been, like I said, different than most, most all golfers, female mm -hmm. golfers. Um, and it didn't just start from when I played Big Break, or it, there wasn't like one point where all of a sudden everything just happened. This had been a process years before, even when I was just modeling, not playing competitive golf. But I think part of it is being able to connect with the fans and they want to know, you know, about your life and kind of, you can kind of take them along your journey with social media. When did you first have that epiphanal moment where you realized I'm kind of famous. You're being recognized. Maybe someone calls out to you in an airport or you're taking a picture with fans and you, you realize that you're very <laughs> recognizable. Probably after the first time I was on Big Break. And an airport actually is a really good place to get recognized, <laughs> even when you don't want to get recognized. I mean, I'm flying all the time. I'm at the airport all the time. So just, you know, last week I was at the airport and I got someone who messaged me on Instagram or Twitter a message saying, are you at Terminal 4 at Gate 23, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm not. It's not yeah. me. And then you're like, who is it? <laughs> but no, um, just getting, I, I got noticed a lot more after being on Big Break. Mm -hmm. And the exposure from that was amazing. But at the same time, everyone is really, really nice. So it's a cool thing. Well, the flip side, of course, of being recognized is being starstruck yourself. When's the last time that you kind of had a, a fangirl moment and got to meet somebody or play golf with somebody that, uh, you know, made you think like, oh, wow, this is awesome. Um, I'm not really like the type to get really that fan struck, but there's one person that comes to mind when you see that. Okay, if I met Beyonce, because I love Beyonce, oh. I've always loved Beyonce, or Justin Timberlake, I, I would have that. I love that you so. brought up Beyonce because really? <laughs> I've been at your shoots now for several years uh -huh. and I feel like whenever I see you in front of the camera, you've got a Sasha Fierce oh God. alter ego <laughs> that comes over you. There's like this, there's a fierceness. I'll take and, that as a compliment. Well, it's, it's the model comes out, right? So yeah. I'm just wondering because you're so bubbly and sweet in person, but in those pictures, there is like a very sultry intensity that you convey on camera. Yeah. Is, is, do you have to go to a different place in your it mind? It is different, yeah. yeah. It's funny because my coach, you know, he would say to me when he'd see certain pictures of me, he's like, just laugh at him. <laughs> like, oh, you're, you're sexy and hot, what the titles would be of whatever article or whatever it was. And he'd <laughs> say, that is so not you. As someone who has played LPGA tour events, still has aspirations to get onto the tour full time, yeah. what do you think, if you could be the commissioner for a day, what does the LPGA tour really need? Just getting more young girls involved in the game. And young girls are on social media mm -hmm. a lot, you know, and watching TV or looking at their Twitter or their Instagram. So I think if you can start with the younger girls and get them following the game of golf or get them interested in certain players, then, you know, that's going to progress into, you know, the, the women's game just growing. And American winners, right? I mean, have, yeah. having having American girls at the top yeah. of the leaderboard has helped enormously oh, yeah, in definitely. recent years. You know, if American players can, you know, win, and they are, um, it just it helps the game. So, again, it helps, you know, young girls growing up to see these players that they can relate to and that they maybe aspire to be one day, and all of that is good. So, looking ahead to the rest of this year, where can we find Blair O'Neill, and what can we expect to see you doing? Well, I kind of am doing a little bit of everything. Playing competitive golf, I'm going to LPGA qualifying, playing, you know, Canadian tour. I have status on the European tour, so I might play in a couple events out there, but I've been really busy here in the States, which has been nice. I've been doing a lot of appearances and corporate outings and things like that. But And then there's some other things that are in the works I really can't talk about <gasps> yet. Oh, <laughs> kill us. But, You're killing us. Um, but you'll know soon, so... Yeah, it's fun. There's always something. It's so. just like you said before, better busy than bored. Yes. Who wants to be bored? Yes. Rather busy have a million things good. to do. Right. 
Blair, Definitely. always a pleasure to speak yeah, with you. Thank you. If you're looking for Blair O'Neill, she's everywhere. Uh. You should be able to find her. Instagram, Twitter, and of course on golf.com. Blair, thank you yep. so thank much. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Really again. appreciate your thank time. You. Good cheers. Oh, yeah. And of course, a great pick with the Pinot Grigio as well. Cheers. <laughs>